Why, hello there, friends, family, and everybody in between. This is Dylan from All Three Universes, and we are bringing you another round of modern today. We have Brady Hayes on the left playing Grixis Death Shadow. On the right, we have Jeffrey Wynn playing Mono Red Aggro. Now, what I will say is, neither of these decks are your typical uh, deck that you're expecting, unless, of course, you are thinking of the standard slash pioneer version of uh, Mono Red Aggro. Jeffrey, I think, is working on putting together his deck. Uh, but hey, we all love some red deck wins. I mean, God, I've played a ton of it in my life. And yeah, so I, I think quite literally this is a standard deck uh, that Jeffrey is working on upgrading. So we love that. Brady is playing Grix of Shadow uh, with a couple new cards from various different things. I know there's a card from Wilds of Eldraine in there. I know there's a card from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. The Lost Caverns card is going to be the 2-mana 8-8, eight, eight, uh, the Ancient One, it's Demir. And uh, it can't attack unless you have 8 or more permanents in the graveyard. And I think it does something else as well. You'll have to forgive me. I have not played much Ixalan yet, though I do kind of want to jam some. Because I have been playing some Magic again. I just take from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, not the Ancient One. I'm so smart. The most intelligent person. All right. Yeah, to send eight, the ancient one can't attack or block unless there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard. You can two or tap two, a blue and a black, draw a card, then discard a card. When you discard a card this way, target player mills cards equal to its mana value. So kind of an interesting one there. Uh, I don't know how card how good the card actually is, um, but it's huge, right? Like its stat line is pretty big. And if you're doing what Brady's trying to do, which is using a uh, fling effect. To just kind of shoot stuff at people. Oh, you you're going to be able to do a good time. Now, Jeff played a okay. Phoenix trick on turn one attack with it. Uh, I believe we got another attack step with it as well. And then he just cast a uh, Saga card. That, I believe, is Kumano faces Kazakhstan. Uh, okay. Chapter one ability is oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Kumano deals one damage to each opponent and each planeswalker they control. The chapter two ability is... When you cast your next creature spell this turn, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter. And then the third uh, chapter, much like most of the Kamigawa, Neon, Dynasty, uh, Enchantment, or Sagas, if not all of them, I think they all actually have this effect. You exile the Saga, then return it transformed uh, under your control. And the backside is the Etching of Kumano is a 2-2 creature with haste. And so if a creature deals damage this turn... By a source you control. Oh, if a creature dealt damage this turn by a source you control, would die. Exile it instead. So, pretty cool deck, or pretty cool card. One mana. Uh, also, notably, does trigger prowess on the Monastery Whispers that I'm sure Jeff is playing in his deck. Pretty here. Casting a. Has cast an Orgish Bowmaster, sniped down the Phoenix trick. And is now staring at. card that I'm trying to figure out what it is. I believe that is Godric, the Cloaked Reveler, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with haste. As long as two or more non-land permanents entered the battlefield under your uh, control this turn, Godric is a dragon with haste power and toughness of 4-4 four, four flying and pay red mana, dragon to control, get plus 1-0 until end of turn. From the Wilds of Eldraine. Attacked in, got some damage going. Uh, we'll fetch I believe we saw the uh, orc token jump in front of that creature there. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm losing my mind right now. Brady fetched with a scalding tarn, accidentally grabbed the swamp. I uh, made a comment and was like, hey, you can't do that. He goes, oh, that's right. Cool, let's grab this island. A little frazzled. He's on the back foot here. <laughs> and we've all been on the back foot of a game before, especially against Mono Red Aggro, where you're like, how do I figure out what I'm doing? So, Brady, trying to assess the game plan. And the thing is with Shadow, right? Shadow is a deck that naturally wants to reduce its life total through means of, like, shocking, fetching, thoughtsies, stuff along those lines. So, you get less life to play with when your opponent's deck is 
quite literally only trying to bash your face in. Now, Brady, Chris Shadow is a little bit more able to just put up uh, random blockers through the effects of, like, the Orcish Bowmasters, the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. There's a preordain. I'm going to look at the top two cards. Let's just scry two. I'm going to draw a card. I don't know what it is about doing commentary that makes me th uh, remember that I have to look for things. I feel like I'm always sorting through a pile of cards while talking. And I am currently in search of spelunkings. Uh, for my Amulet Titan deck. I know I have them. I picked up a playset. I just don't know what the heck I did with them. There's like piles of cards on my desk, and I don't think they're... Imagine they're in these piles. All right, we have a Kamado that has flipped. Chandra Dust to Show. Okay. Comes in with three loyalty. Sure. I will increase your loyalty to deal one damage to you and add a red mana. That red mana and this other red mana to pay reckless impulse, exile top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play a card. Sure. Alrighty, we are resolving a. Oh, what the heck's the name of that card? Uh. And then I will turn your like reckless impulse, I think. It exiles the top two cards of your deck and lets you play them until the end of the turn. Or until the end of the next turn. The Kraken for three damage here. Clear block there. I do not believe we got the trigger for the gentleman. We see a bowmaster jump in front of it, a lightning bolt cast on it. And that will take the creature with. Now come on, I will crack in for some damage here. Brady going to eight. Jeffrey's still sitting at twenty. Pretty face for the decision. I see the fling card in his hand. Taps a blue and a red. Maybe two blue. We are deliberating on our play. Just saying go. Jeffrey going to play a land for turn off the Reckless Impulse. These players' board compositions give me anxiety. Brady's graveyard is so far away from his deck, which I'm not used to. Uh, Jeff has his lands all the way to the left. It's interesting. Uh, all right, going to be playing with fire here. And again, for two damage, we'll get the scry one because he hit uh, a player, not a creature. Going to flat game. 
flash in Orcish Bow Masters. ETB trigger going to target the Kamano, and then we're going to see that token jump in front of Kamano as well. We'll trade it away. It will cast a scar. I believe it is a lightning bolt. Shooting Brady for three. There's so many arts for bolt now that, honestly, <laughs> I have no idea. All right, Brady down to two from the Chandra uptick. The play with fire is in the graveyard. One card in hand for Jeff. Now, if Brady can establish a Death Shadow here and then just fade interaction by Jeffrey, like if Jeff draws a burn spell that's uh, almost anything, he loses, he wins the game. Uh, Brady has a two turn clock he has to f worry about the Chandra with. There's the Ancient One. I do not think we have enough permanents for it to matter though. No, I do not. So we may be seeing it get flung at the Chandra. Yep, we'll fling the Ancient One at the Planeswalker. The turn. Uh, that card is on an adventure. I don't think it'll matter. Any it is not in the graveyard. Um. Right. There's a Monastery Swiss Spear. There is a spell that will get rid of the Bowmasters, and that will make the Swiss Spear lethal. Jeffrey will be taking game one, and we'll be right back with game two in just a second, folks. And we're back with game two. We have Brady on the play, playing a Blood Crypt untapped, going to 18. Here's a Dragon's Rage Shanley. Potentially my favorite one-drop creature of all time. I was talking with my coworker uh, about it, and we were just talking about the absolute power level uh, that Darcy has over Delver of Secrets, and how Dragon's Rage Shanley just does so much more for the Delver deck than Legacy. Now, I know this isn't Legacy, but there's a reason we don't see Delver Secrets in Modern. And it's not because it's not legal. Um, Chainless is so much better. Like, dear God. <laughs> so much better. Um, Alright, Brady. Going to cycle a Street Wraith here. It's going to be going down to 15. Jeffrey, just play the mountain. Said go. Fetches an island here. I'm not sure which expe expedition that is. I'm not super familiar with the Zendikar expedition arts. Alright, Brady, gonna have to race back, right? He will have to be putting on a clock and just be presenting Jeffrey with damage that he will not be able to interact with. Whether that be through large creatures uh, in the form of, like, Death Shadow. Or just getting in for 3-3 three, three flyers by overflowing the board with uh, I'm missing Murktide Regents with Channelers. Alright, going down to 19. Going to second land. We'll cast another copy of Kamano. Cool. Ping Brady for one damage. Going down to 14 here. Alright, two mana cast Orcish Bowmasters. Ping Jeffrey down to 18. This does accelerate the clock a good bit. Now, Bowmaster is probably not going to be able to trigger off any draws here by Jeffrey. Uh, barring any copies of, like, Fable of the Mirror Breaker that Jeffrey might have, I don't think anything else in the deck uh, specifically states the word draw on it. Alright, Meyer fetches Watered Grave, shocks down. We're putting ourselves to, I believe, 11. Yeah, and it's... 
my turn, I can sacrifice it. Play Death Shadow. Alright, Death Shadow coming out is a 2 2. We'll cast Altsies, targeting Jeffrey. A surveil trigger from the channel. This will be the third type entering the graveyard. That looks to be a stern spawning. There's four types. Delirium is now online. Pretty willing to take a look at Jeff's hand. And discard a non land card from it. And just give it a look over. Does take a copy of. Uh, what I'm not exactly sure. Um, it kind of looks like Shiv and Devastator, but I think I might be wrong. Cracks in for some damage. We'll be doing five here, putting Jeffrey to 13. Uh, Jeffrey is only two turn clock now. If he's unable to find interaction or a creature. Pretty sure that is Shivan Devastator. The X Red Dragon from Dominaria United. I will play the second Kamano Another copy of uh Kamano getting caster. Pings break down to eight. Shadow is a five five now. Uh, go to combat. Swing one, three, the four, nine, ten. Cracking in for ten damage. Pretty will cast a second Death Shadow. And this is that strategy we were talking about. Just needing to overlook, uh, overwhelm the board. Before Jeffrey can get his setup going. Just regular Shadow? Yeah. And at this point, Jeffrey is just like deterministically dead to flyers. Unless he has interaction for the channeling. Chandra dressed to kill, getting caster. Uh, and I will use your second ability to uh, exile the top card of my library, and if it's red, I can cast it. Sure. If it's red and it costs one mana, I can cast it. Yep. Will plus exile the top card. Uh, I can see. Okay. And we'll scoop it up. Brady will be taking game two, and we'll be right back with game three. Yep, go for it. And by right back, I mean literally cuts to it immediately. <laughs> Mountain, land for turn, monastery, Swiss beer, attack for one. Swiss beer, not a vigilant creature. It is tapped, but that's okay. Skeletor, I'm going to fetch down to 16 here. I imagine it's getting shot at least. Yeah, 
We have a gentleman here from Brady. Kamado. Damage being done. Putting him to 15. Does get a prowess trigger. I'll crack in for two damage here. So he goes to 13. Three types in the yard. We have a bobble, a Kroxa, and a scalding tar. It's crazy how Kroxa used to be so good. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Tabo cards have been, you know, were so good in these colors and then are no longer good. Snapcaster Mage, uh, Lily on the Veil, Tarmogoyf. A bunch of old guard uh, cards have just kind of fallen off. No fallen by the way, the Wayside. Wayside? Uh, will cast Lightning Bolt on the Swiss Spear, get a Surveil Trigger. Doing this in his post-combat main phase. So he doesn't have to open himself up to having no blockers in case Jeff has a surprise creature. Uh, though I wonder if there's an argument to just try and start your clock now by swinging the channel air for three. Because, like, if Jeff has, like, a nuts turn, there's not much Brady could do about it. Like, if, if Jeff's turn was, like, double Swift Spear Lightning Bolt, having the blocker, it helps a little bit, but not a lot. Also, because you'd probably just bolt the channeler at that point. Okay, Tax for four, blocks. Let's say Meyer getting played as land for turn here for Birdie. We'll develop another blocker. Go to combat. Swing it in here. No block. Down to five. Fetch four. Brady down to four here. Precarious position. Really bad. 
draw for turn. Yep, I'm dead. And we'll scoop it up. Jeff is going to take it 2-1 with Monterey Agro over Grixit Shadow, folks. Thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your day.